Hello! Welcome back to Dubstep Dive, the series where we take a look at something's English dub and let you know how it all lines up. And it's been a bit since we visited our old friend Gurren Lagann, but I figured it's finally time to take a look at the lost, extremely rare ADV dub. Shoutouts to once again goes to my friend Mansour Goku for helping me uh, get a chance to watch this bad boy. So, yeah, we could finally talk about it a bit. So, I briefly went over this last time with Gurren Lagann. Um, how ADV fought to get the rights to it, and sort of did back in 2007. They announced they had the rights to it, and you all know what happened eventually, right? Bandai took over. I'm not going to go over the plot of Gurren Lagann, because we did that last time, as well as who was all in that dub, but we all know, I'll leave a wing and thing, all that stuff. But yeah. Back to ADV, though. So yeah, in 2007, at a convention, they announced they had the license to it, because... ADV at the around this time were starting to have financial issues. So, which makes sense. If you look at them, they were buying in quantity over quality. So they'd get like 40 to 80 obscure anime no one's ever heard of. And you all know what happened with that. I'm not saying any of those anime are bad or anything, but name me like five people that have heard of something like Aquarion Age or Chance Pop Sessions. I haven't seen those animes, so maybe they are really, really good, but the point I'm getting at is none of them were hitting the mainstream success that ADV desperately needed. There wasn't, a, like, a full metal alchemist there or anything. And, yeah, so they're targeting nothing but popular anime at this point, hence why they went with Gurren at the time. Which makes sense. Popular mecha seemed to be in their wheelhouse. Evangelion, Full Metal Panic... Martian successor Nadesco, that is definitely a series I need to see at some point. And, well, now Gurren. It's a fine strategy, but I feel it was too little too late. And it definitely was. Because in January of 2008, ADV would end up removing the license or the um, postings of Gurren Lagann along with 13 other anime franchises from their website. What were these other anime franchises? I don't know, and I really want to find out, because I would love to see what Lost dubs are out there. It's that whole thing, you know? Like Hybrid X Heart. How far did they get through the dub before it was cancelled? Speaking of which, uh, whoever, uh, is at the old Funimation Crunchyroll Texas dub studio? If, if you could, you know, leak the Hybrid X Heart dub that I, I hear it was basically near finished, uh, you know, I'd, that, that'd be cool. Just, just say it, you know, you know, for a friend. Anyway... Um, yeah. ADV would end up closing their doors in September 9th of 2009. <gasps> the 10th anniversary of Dreamcast Day! Is that a sign? But yeah. Only clips would end up flying around YouTube for a bit. Until, in 2019, someone would upload the five episodes to, uh, a few sites, shall we say. And, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, these five episodes were on an alleged preview disc that ADV passed around at conventions for people to get a look at. But that hasn't been confirmed. It would make sense, though. Again, five episodes does sound like your typical ADV volume. Hell, the credits on this weren't even translated, so I don't know who the ADR director is or the scriptwriter. But we do know who all the voice actors are, so we could take a look at that. And, yeah. How's the dub itself? Um, it's fine. There are some performances that I think are really solid. Others, well, let's just say I'm glad Bang Zoom took over, or Bandai. So first, let's start with our protagonist, Simon. Or as they pronounce it in this, Simon. I think I might actually prefer Simon. It's spelled that way, and makes sense. But y'all let me know. Voiced by Josh Greeley, Mal from The Devil is a Part-Timer, and Masamune from Masamune's Revenge. Yeah, that show deserves a season two, but the second I asked for some, whatever. I actually think he does really good here. True story, um, back in 2009, 2010, I marathon all of Kenichi, and then went straight into Gurren Lagann right after that, and I confused Josh for Yuri Lowenthal. Don't ask me how, but I managed to do it, and... It just makes this come full circle, in my opinion. So, I don't know, I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, um, especially with Simon making the, ah! you know, high-pitched noises and everything that, that Josh's whole career has been. Um, makes sense. 
which I think I said Kadichi was j one of Josh's first main roles. Simon might actually beat that. I'm pretty sure he does, actually. I punched my mic and muted it. I don't know how that happened, but that happened. Anyway, um, but yeah, I, I think he does really solid here. Um, I would have loved if this dub got finished to hear how he would have portrayed, you know, um, serious Simon. I guess it probably would have been something akin to um, his character from Dr. Stone, you know, his deeper voice. Or maybe his character that uses the shadow from My Hero Academia. I'm drawing a blank. You all know who I'm talking about, right? The the bird dude that trains with hawks. Um, fuck, whatever. Probably his, he'd probably go for his deeper voice. Anyway, yeah, I, I don't I don't mind this, you know? If, if we got stuck with this one. Now, for Kamina. Just who the hell do you think I am? Yes, they kept that line. I was wondering how they would. Kamina's got some great lines. I'm going to get to those at the end, though, when we're done going over everybody. Kamina is now voiced by Brett Weaver, who's Guy from Martian Successor and Nadesco, and I hear a lot of people say they're similar. I'll find out eventually. Ryu from Street Fighter 2 ADV's dub, which we did do a video on. Uh, see, you know, Kai Weber, Brett Weaver, yeah, yeah, similarity. And Gunther from Attack on Titan. Now, I am not a fan of this Kamina. To be fair, he tries. The problem is, his voice is too deep and for a lot of Kamina's scenes. Not to mention, he makes it go high-pitched gravelly at times when Kamina's freaking out, so... Like that, kind of. That's the best thing I could describe it as. And it just... It doesn't work for me. Um, I saw some people say they actually preferred it online, which, you know, if that's you, cool, but... I don't know. This is one I'm definitely glad we got Kai Weber out of. Especially because, I mean... The, Kai Weber's portrayal of him is iconic. So... After him, we have Yoko, voiced by Tiffany Grant. Asuka from Evangelion. Yeah, seeing, you know, voicing a feisty redhead in a mecha by Kynax. I see what they did there. And Zatella from Chrono Crusade. And to be honest, I think this was perfect casting. I'm serious. Tiffany Grant actually nails the role. Michelle Ruff is also iconic, too, though, to be fair. I'm trying not to turn this into a dub versus dub if I can help it, but... Unfortunately, it's hard to do that. But yeah, Tiffany does a really good job as Yoko. And it would have been curious to see um, what would have happened if this dub went through. It sucks it did it, though, like Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga completed both dubs. But yeah. After her, we have Viral, the Beast Man, voiced by Vic Mignogna, Ed from Full Metal Alchemist, Kurtz Weber from Full Metal Panic, and... The best voice of Rompo from Bungo Stray Dogs. Because I had to mention that I got seriously, I'll show watch Bungo. So, so, you know, no bias or anything about the Rompo thing. Now, Vic's portrayal of Vero is just fucking weird. He makes him talk like a savage goblin man. I, I even sent Die a clip of it, and he was like, why the goblin voice? It's, it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. He makes him talk like this. And I, I'm kind of for it, actually. What if, like... I don't know how they would have carried that on, though, in the later half of the show with what happens with Viral, but I, I still would have been all for it. I would have been very interested to see. But it's Vic, so you all know, I've got lots of bias there. After him, we have Keton. You all know Kamina's uh, rival. I'm going to say Kamina's wife. <laughs> I'm sure there's some people who'd probably say that. Um, Keaton is voiced by Jason Douglas, who's Subaki from Dead Mount Deathplay, and Claude from Black Butler. I'm still shocked that's getting another season after all these years, but who knows? Anything's possible. And also Beerus from Dragon Ball Super, if you want his most iconic voice role. And I think it's another solid pick. You don't get much on Keaton in this, um, sadly, but, you know, with what he's given, it works. It's a very safe pick. A lot of these are safe picks for ADV, because it seems like they wanted to pick a lot of their A-listers at the time because of the situation they were in and they really wanted this stuff to succeed. You'll see that in, with um, Keaton's siblings, the Black Siblings. Yeah, 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 make joke, blah. Like, first we have Keenon, voiced by Brittany Karbowski, Yamada from Begata HK, Yamada's first time, and Rimuru from that time I got reincarnated as a slime. 
So, uh, ask it for a friend, but, you know, if, if someone like that slime, would th th that make them gay? Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Again, you don't get much on the siblings because they're only in one episode of this dub, but I think it's pretty solid. Especially since Keenan was Stephanie Shea in the other dub, Brittany Karbowski is a solid match. Like, I could see, like, if, let's say, Sailor Moon were dubbed by ADV, you know, if that just so happened, uh, Brittany Karbowski probably could do an okay Usagi. Now, the other siblings. First, we have Kyo, voiced by Kira Vincent Davis, Miyu from the Fate Alias spinoff, and Lucy from Elfin Lead. Again, not a bad performance by any means. I, it's just hard to comment on with these siblings in particular. Keaton's the one who gets the most screen time, and outside of these three being communist fan club, you get the idea. So, the last one, Kia and Buta, are both voiced by Monica Royale. Yeah, you all knew she was coming. It's an ADV up from around this time. So, Uzaki from Uzaki-chan, and Sakura from Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles, and Cardcaptor Sakura Clear Card. And, I mean, Buta is just the mascot who makes weird noises. To be honest, it's not really much to go off of. As far as Kia, it's just Monica doing her. I, I, I guess I've heard people call it her big girl voice or her deep voice. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure someone out there is into it, but not much to really go on because she's barely here. Next, we have Rossio. Rossio was the um, dude that they took from the village of those people who worship the gunmen. If you all remember, he was Johnny Bosch in the Bang Zoom dub, so. Um, or the Bandai dub, whatever you want to call it. Um, now he's Chris Patton, who's Sagara from Full Metal Panic, Shun from Saint Seiya's ADV dub, and Turlis from uh, DBZ. Which they call him Ross Yu in this? That's another pronunciation. <laughs> I wonder how many more they would have got if this kept going. Chris Patton's actually really solid. Um, I, I don't have any complaints. I think he would have done great, especially with what happens with Rossio later on when he turns, you know, um, into the head of state or whatever you want to call it. I, I think Chris would have done a fantastic job there. I would have been very curious to see. That's all I could really say, though. Like, I, I wish this got more. After that, we have Liron, the mechanic who's uh, in love with gunmen. Voiced by Mark Axelskowski. I probably butchered that. Um, Ogata from Angelic Lair. And Akira from Haikyuu, but his most known role, Fat Bald Creep from Grimoire of Zero. And, yeah, he does really fun. Um, there's a scene where um, Liron is singing when he's using mechanical spiders to look at the gunman. Just watch the show and you'll see where they'll go. And you can tell he's just having a blast playing this type of character. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. I think most people would have fun playing a character like Liron. At least I would. I, I, I think it'd be fun. Um... So, like, that's the thing. You could, Everyone here is just having the time of their life in a show like Gurren, and you have to, right? So, yeah. Um, we only have a couple more that we got in this. So, next we have Gimme, voiced by Greg Aris, because for some reason, if you have a Shota, they always went to Greg Aris in ADV and Sentai Land. Gonta from Dead Man Wonderland. Remake that anime already. Seriously, guys. Come on. And Frost and Gota from Dragon Ball. Yeah, I was a little lazy with getting rolls for him from for this one. Fuck it. And again, I don't know. I've always found it weird when Greg voices younger characters because, you know, it's. I just feel it's miscast. It's his performance isn't the problem, but that's just me. Maybe you all disagree. We also have his sister Dari, who they pronounce Dairy here, and I kept thinking Dairy Ari, that bitch from Seven Deadly Sins, voiced by Hilary Hag. Again, another safe pick. Tessa from Full Metal Panic, and Safu from Number Six. That show is fucking bizarre. Uh, uh yeah, I, I, maybe I'll cover it someday. I don't know. Again, safe pick. Um, she did fine. Th these are all honestly, like I said, s very safe picks. After her, we have Dayaka, who's the village chief from where um, Yoko came from, voiced by John Gramillion who's Misaki from, or Misaki Kobayashi from Domestic Girlfriend, and Luke Walker from Divergence Eve. Oh, come on, you're not even trying on that one. 
you know, does Divergent Sleep any good? If I watch it and it's not a Star Wars parody or something, I'm going to be very disappointed. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. Again, another fine performance. He's only in one episode as well, so... Not, not really much to go over on that one. Um, the last one we actually got was Nia, you know, best girl. Even though she didn't show up, it was confirmed that she was going to be voiced by Lucy Christian, Trish from the Devil May Cry anime, and Uraraka from My Hero Academia. And I think that also would have been great casting. Lucy's always good at playing, you know, cutesy characters like this, and I think it would have worked. So my guess is, um, they auditioned and casted her, but obviously they didn't get that far. But it does make you wonder, did they? Maybe they did dub a shit ton more of the series than we thought, and it just wasn't released. That'd be fucking cool, wouldn't it? Ooh, mystery deepens. Now, as far as any other things that stood out to me, um, there was a lot of recycled Rob Mungles, you know, Morrison from the Devil May Cry anime. Um, his voice is very distinct. Like, he plays uh, Kamina's dad. He's also a bunch of one-off ad voices. Uh, so, yeah. It's... But that's it's to be expected. I, I don't think he's the best person you should have, though, as a... Um, Ad voice recycling because he's got a very distinct voice, like I said. It's like having Johnny on Bosch is like 15 people. Why would you do that? But that's it. That's honestly all we got so far. And we could take a guess at who some of the other characters would have been voiced by. I could honestly suspect the Spiral King probably would have been John Swayze, because that would have been a safe pick. Um, Dave Matranga probably would have voiced one of the Elite Four. I could even see Shelly Colleen Black voicing a DNA. Um, because again, it would be a very safe pick, and I think they, they would have done solid jobs, personally, but, oh well. Some of the funny lines I, I wanted to go over, though, Kamina calling, um, a group of the Beastmen ugly skank holes, or, um, oh yeah, they call Logon Login, so Gurren Login, which I've heard some people pronounce it that way, so. Kamina also saying, prepare for, for, for some skull pounding. <laughs> Yeah. Um, or his attack name. The Complete Combustion of Masculine Soul Cannon Attack. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? But the last line I want to go over is this one. When the souls of two men merge straight like, you know, you gotta, it should be a beautiful thing. Yeah, he had to put it in there. You, you always gotta make sure it's straight like It's like he realized uh, how that sounded the second he started saying it. I don't remember that line being like that in the original dub, or the other dub, but fuck knows. Overall, though, um, yeah, this was a very interesting piece of anime history to look at, and this was honestly a solid attempt from ADV. That's the best way I could put it. If we got this dub, would it have been as iconic as the Bandai dub? Uh, I've got to be fair and say I don't think it would have. Because the, the Bandai dub is so fucking iconic. Yuri Lowenthal, Michelle Ruff, and Kyle Weber all knocked it out of the park in that one. And, um, like, this dub, again, it's still... I think it would have been one of ADV's better dubs, but I don't think it would have been, you know top-tier godlike dub. Like, a lot of people look back on the Gurren Lagann dub with fondness. I don't know how that would have worked with this one. Though, who knows? Maybe they would have found their groove in the last 20 or so episodes, and, you know, they they could have um, actually knocked it out of the park, too. Tiffany Grant as Yoko is still fucking great, though. And hey, Vic uh, giving Viral the goblin voice is definitely a choice. But yeah. That's all I really gotta say on it. Um... If you haven't seen this dub yet, again, it is out there. I'd have Goku help me track it down, like I said, but it is out there, if you're curious, and I would recommend it, especially if you're a Gurren Lagann fan, which I will say that, watching this again, it made me want to go to the other dub and marathon and finish it. I didn't do that, but it made me want to, because there's just something about this damn show with its themes of learning to trust in others, learning to believe in yourself, and you know, achieving your dream, etc., and chasing after your limits and surpassing them. Yeah, cliche themes, I know, but I still think they're powerful themes, and I love that shit, so. 
And Garden Lockout is just a fun as hell show to watch. And this dub still embody that. Because like I said, I don't think it's as good as the Bang dub. Um, I'm going to keep switching between them. I don't want to keep doing that. But again, it was still really solid. And everyone here was having the time of their life. And that's what's important. In a show like this, you have to convince the audience. You're having just as much fun um, as they are watching it. You know, while you're voicing it. If that makes sense. I think I had a stroke saying that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, funny though that we're talking about Gurren Lock on here because last month at Anime Expo, it was announced the two films are going into U.S. theaters next year, and I am hoping that they give them an English dub this time. Please do that, you know. All these voice actors still work today too. You know, Yuri would love to come back for Simon or Simon if you prefer, whatever you want to call him. Like, all of them would love to come back. Because I'm sure that, you know, like, especially because Yuri still comes back for Sasuke, you cannot convince, or you can't tell me he wouldn't come back for Simon, all right? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if they do dub the films, we will definitely be doing another episode on Gurren Lagann, because I fucking love that shit. If you haven't seen anything of Gurren, what the hell are you doing? Go watch it, it's great! Like, even if you're not big into Mecha, sh you know, give it a shot, who knows, maybe this one will convince you, this show's fucking great. But, um, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. And yeah, I love taking a look at these alternate dubs. Expect more of these in the future, because these are cool. Seeing what could have been, or what is probably out there in an alternate timeline, because maybe another timeline did get the ADV dub. Who knows? But yeah, guys, thanks again so much for watching, and let me know your thoughts. MVP for this one? Um, well, it's hard to say, because so short. Probably Tiffany Granajoko. I can't stress enough how I felt she did a fantastic job nailing um, Yoko. I, th I thought she did really good. Josh was pretty alright as, uh, S Simon as well. I'm gonna call him Simon in that particular case, because that's how the dub pronounced it. Let me know if you agree, disagree, etc. And, yeah. We'll be back next time with something else. So, hope y'all enjoyed. Thank you all again so much for watching, and hope you have a good day. See you later!